This is an excerpt from my book, Bricklin on Technology. It's from Chapter 12, about VisiCalc. VisiCalc was announced to the public at the National Computer Conference in New York City in June of 1979. Personal computers were still very new, and typically viewed as toys for hobbyists by the makers and users of the larger mainframes and minicomputers. Bob Frankston delivered a paper at the personal computer part of the conference, a small event in a hotel near the main show floor where the real computers were displayed, describing the new program he had just written. Here are some excerpts. Many people justifiably ask what today's personal computers are good for, aside from playing games. Typically equipped with a basic interpreter as the human interface, these machines either require extensive programming by the user or else require the purchase, when they are available, of restrictive CAN programs for specific applications. Few people can be expected to be able or willing to expend the effort to write programs in BASIC or Pascal for simple applications. CAN packages tend to be very specific, Procrustean beds to which the user's application must conform. Thus, our task as professionals becomes one of finding the appropriate level of tools that corresponds to the level at which the user deals with an application. For personal computers, VisiCalc presents an interface to the user which builds upon that with which he is already familiar. It is, of course, constrained by the memory and processing limits of the current generation of personal computers. Bob Frankston, June 1979. In hindsight, it was a great paper for the time. However, it wasn't the well-received announcement you might expect. Lots of our relatives and our publishers attended. Almost nobody else cared. There were 20 friends and family and two real attendees, but as Bob recalls, the two people we didn't know walked out early, probably because it wasn't like the talk about the undocumented opcodes of the TI-59 calculator, a hot topic in those days. Afterwards, we went to a kosher restaurant nearby to celebrate the talk and Bob's upcoming 30th birthday. I returned to Massachusetts and graduated Harvard Business School soon after Bob's talk. At that conference, Bob and I met Bill Gates and Ben Rosen for the first time. Bill was a young kid, best known for his version of BASIC and speeding tickets. Ben was still an electronics analyst at Morgan Stanley. At Ben's conference a couple of months before, VisiCalc was shown privately to attendees by Dan Feilstra. The New York Times ran a humorous article about the trade show, A Layman's Trip into the Mega Mega Land of Computers, by Francis X. Kleins. He saw a sign with a funny name being made for the personal software booth and included a mention of it in the article. An ignorant layman staggers away from a visit to the four floors of computer equipment on display at the Coliseum, and his heart leaps at the sight of the first fully comprehensible business tool he has seen all day, a set of sandwich boards worn by Sonny Monison to advertise the used computers he is hawking on the sidewalk to the horde of passing conventioneers. The machines perform what seem religious rites, telling their beads and chips, fueled by the sort of faith that built Babel. Even as the believers gather, the painters in the Colosseum sign room are adding to the Pantheon, carefully lettering VisiCalc in giant black on yellow. All hail VisiCalc! Francis X. Kleins, New York Times, June 7, 1979, page B1. Mr. Kleins didn't fully understand the details of the products he mentioned. It was a layman's trip, but we sure appreciated the quote. Interest in what it did, i.e. being an electronic spreadsheet, was low in the general business press. VisiCalc didn't appear in a major newspaper or business magazine for many months after that first mention. Technology often takes a while to be appreciated and catch on. Many business people who saw our demo in the booth, though, were enthusiastic. For more information about the book, you can go to my website, www.bricklin.com.